she has said, my uh, presentation this afternoon will be on farmers living this debate for genetically modified maize seeds in the Philippines. Uh, a choice experiment approach. Uh, for the outline of my presentation, I will give uh, some, a little bit of introduction and then uh, say something about the Philippine BT maize experience and uh, explain the fundamentals of the choice experiment approach and uh, the design and the application of this choice experiment and uh, go to results and discussions. And the results and discussion will comprise of characterization of farmers and the farms, the meat may seed supply in the Philippines, and then the uh, results of the conditional logic model and the random parameter logic. And then we look at the impacts of regional heterogeneity and current seed on and, ca and current seed on choice. And uh, uh, we look at willingness to pay uh, through implicit prices of may seed attributes, and then give you some important conclusions and policy implications. Second to rise uh, in importance uh, in the great economy of our country, and the third largest contributor to gross value added in agriculture. Uh, we produce two types of maize. One is white, which is basically used for food purposes, and the other is yellow, mainly used as an ingredient uh, for feed, for uh, livestock, and poultry production. Uh, the, but uh, the burgeoning uh, demand for meat has increased the pressure for the country to produce more corn. And uh, this has been uh, dramatically uh, uh, experienced through our increasing importation over the years. Uh, the problem is basically the low yields of uh, the traditional corn. So through researches, they were able to develop the open pollinated varieties and the hybrids, which eventually resulted into higher uh, per unit yield for corn. But uh, again, there have been problems uh, that uh, uh, contributed to yield losses, and these were increasing pressures, uh, biotic and biotic pressures, and uh, more importantly, the problems on pests and diseases. So there has been continued varietal improvement again. And more lately, uh, some enhancements have been uh, provided on the maize seed attribute that can uh, resist the attack of the Asian border, which has become severe in the last uh, uh, decade. So this study uh, specifically deals on the BT maize seed. Well, other traits can be considered, you have the roundup ready and the stock genes. Okay. So the objective of this uh, seminar, oops. the objective of this seminar is simply to provide information on farmers' willingness to pay for the may seed attributes that uh, we are going to reveal later. and uh, support policy making and seed industry development strategies by understanding what uh, attributes farmers would prefer on their seeds. Uh, this, this, this study is uh, significant in uh, uh, many ways. One is that there's been an absence of May seed preference study in the Philippines. There's not been one that has been conducted. Second, it adds to the emerging literature on uh, choice experiment methodologies in a developing country context. There have been so many studies conducted in developed country context, but uh, only a few has been done on a developing country context. And lastly, for pur policy purposes as endorsed by the National Committee on Biosafety, 
in the national biosafety framework of the Philippines. It uh, suggests or recommends uh, economic analysis should be conducted. <coughs> For the uh, BTMA's experience, uh, we experienced the infestation of the Asian bone borer in the 80s, and this was a severe infestation. And uh, this contrib contributed to a yield reduction of as high as 80%. And if you will see this picture, this was taken in South Cotabato, practically nothing was harvested in this farm, which is about 3 hectares. And this is the damage brought about by the Asian pork border. The variety that was used was a hybrid variety, uh, but it was non -B. So with this problem, uh, the country commercialized uh, the BT corn in 2002. It was approved for commercialization in 2002 and was on the ground uh, first cropping of 2003 and 2004. So, uh, but the introduction was controversial, as you have probably read or heard, due to the risk and uncertain uncertainties uh, brought about by the impacts. Okay. So, in during that time, we conducted the first survey of BT and non BT points in 2003 and uh, 2004. And uh, the BT maize was first marketed in Isabella. Bukidnon, South Cotabato, and Camarines Road. And uh, for our study, uh, we did some cost and returns, and uh, we found out that BT farms provided an additional income of 10,000 per hectare over the BT farms. The difference in income. Right? Kilometric analysis also revealed adoption increased, uh, that adoption increased profits. It reduced yield losses and decreased expenditures on insecticide. But our observation in 2003, the decrease in expenditures was still very minimal because uh, it was the first time that farmers adopted the BT. And when they see, whenever they see the BT, uh, the Asian pork border on the maize, they panic. So even if they were using BT corn, they still apply uh, insecticide. So the decrease was minimal. Our estimate was about 300 pesos on per hectare. So the early planted to BT maize grew over the years. In 2003, it was only 1% of total yellow maize area, which is about 10,000 hectares. Now, in 2009, we have a quarter of a million hectares. This does not include the single trade roundup ready. So this is just the BT trade which is about 25% of the year maize area. Now for the choice experiment approach, the, the approach uh, that we have used here is uh, quite a new one. Usually when we do demand analysis, we use the conventional theory of consumer which uh, tells us that uh, utility is derived from the consumption of a marketed good or the level that it takes. And everything can be explained by monetary phenomena, prices and income. So, but Lancaster introduced a new method saying that uh, a good has intrinsic qualities wherein utility can be derived, okay? So from this characteristic or attribute of the good, satisfaction of the consumer can be derived. An example would be, I bought that car because it was colored red. That, that's how he derived his satisfaction, okay? So, we now look at demand analysis using surrogate markets. Uh, surrogate in terms of the characteristic of the commodity. Hence, we have the reveal preference method. And if you are using, uh, looking at valuing commodity based on characteristic, we use hedonic pricing. Hedonic is the characteristics of the commodity. 
Another approach, we can use the travel cost methods uh, or review preference methods. And there are other methods that are less frequently used in, uh, uh, in, de in demand analysis. But here, you have surrogate markets that exists. Okay? On conditions that the market does not exist, then we have hypothetical markets. And for characteristics of a good, we usually have hypothetical markets. And when we deal with hypothetical markets, we use the state stated preference method. And there are two type, two methods that are commonly used, the contingent valuation method and the choice experiment method. Contingent valuation, probably you've heard about this, this is commonly used in uh, environmental assessments. Contingent valuation method. But uh, it has been shown that uh, the, conti uh, the choice experiment method has some advantages over the contingent valuation method. One, it is superior to CDM for analysis simulating actual choice behavior. So we ask farmer to choose which characteristic he likes. This is simulating actual choice behavior. Second, it relies on the accuracy and completeness of product attributes. So we determine the attribute of product and ask, uh, ask them uh, from the farmers uh, which attribute they prefer. Number three, provide use values based on survey or new products. This is method is basically used in marketing in trying to determine whether the feasibility of the introduction of a new product in the market. And number four, it solves it solves for some biases, hypothetical uh, mostly in contingent valuation method and respondents, since respondents are more familiar with choice rather than payment approach. theoretical grounding in Lancaster's model of consumer behavior, as I was telling you, uh, based on characteristics, and econometric basis in random utility theory. These are the two footholds of this uh, concept in economic theory. Let us consider a, farmer, a farmer's choice of may see given a utility function uh, expressed in equation one. What this is saying is that uh, for a given farmer I, the level of utility is based on the alternatives available to the farmer. May seed alternatives available to the farmer expressed by J. Okay. So the utility of the J alternative is mainly attributed to the level of attributes for that kind of may seed alternative expressed in the vector z. Okay? So uh, in this function, uh, you will see that b as a function of zij is a deterministic part. And this is basically attributed to Lancaster. And another component is the error component because we cannot accurately determine the, the utility provided by these attributes. Okay? We cannot accurately determine the utility provided by these attributes. So since uh, there is an error component here, there is an error component, then the analysis will be more on probabilistic choice. The determination of utility will be on probabilistic choice. So here you have your uh, deterministic part and the independent and the error uh, component part, which is independent of the deterministic part. 
and follows a predetermined distribution. So, since it is of probabilistic choice, the choices made between alternatives will be a function of probability that the utility associated with a particular maze seed option J is higher than, with, than that with other alternatives. What this is saying is that the uh, respondent will choose alternative J over K if the difference in the predetermined part is greater than the difference in the error, the error component part. So he will adopt J, uh, alternative J over K. So to provide an explanation of, uh, of uh, the error component, we assume that the error compo component is identically and independently distributed with an extreme value. And when you talk of extreme value, you can have the Weibull or the Gumbel distribution. And once you have the Weibull or Gumbel, then you can convert it into a logistic distribution. And equation one can be estimated with a conditional logic model of the form is the standard conditional logic uh, equation. And we can convert that into an indirect utility function, which is uh, assuming a, a linear utility index, then this is now your utility function, where beta is alternative specific constants, n is the number of seed attributes, so this one is seed attribute 1, seed attribute 2, up to n attributes. Beta 1 to beta n are vector of coefficients. Okay. And what? Following Lampasta theory, uh, the beta 1 to beta n, beta n will give you implicit prices of the uh, characteristic. Now, there are disadvantages of the conditional logic model, however. One is on the assumption that the distribution of the error term imposes the IIA, identically and independently, uh, independent of alternatives property. Okay. The relative properties of two options being chosen are unaffected by the introduction or removal of other alternatives. If you cannot satisfy the IIA property, then the results will be biased. Second, it assumes homogeneous preferences across partners. Where other partners are, it assumes homogeneous preferences. So whenever these are not satisfied, then we can look at other models. And what another model that can satisfy these two is the random parameter logic model. It does not uh, take care of the, above, uh, of the above disadvantages and the utility function will be now given oops, by this. No, this is now your heterogeneity of your sample. Okay? The indirect utility function now includes interaction of farmer and or farmer characteristics. So if farmer and farmer characteristics differ, then there is some heterogeneity that comes in into the activity function and the results will be biased. And this comes in through the random com component that I okay. The results of the CM can be used also to estimate the implicit prices of the attributes, which is basically the marginal rate of substitution of the non-marketed non -marketed attribute and the monetary attribute or simply the marginal welfare measure, which is willingness to pay for a change in the attribute. And this is given by this equation. Simply, the ratio between the beta of a particular attribute or characteristic divided by the uh, coefficient of the monetary variable. Okay. And just for this study, we use the same price as the monetary uh, variable. Multiply, multiply that by negative one, that is your measure of your willingness to pay.
Now, for the choice experiment design and application, the crucial part is uh, to determine the choice set. Okay? What attributes to include? And for this, uh, to determine this, what we need was to do an FGD, initial FGD in the area, uh, farmers group discussion, and try to elicit from the farmers what attributes they would prefer from the seeds that they buy. Okay. So, there were three prof profiles identified, therefore, from these FGDs with five attributes, and this is shown here. You have your seed attribute. Farmer's first attribute was yield loss. A percent of yield loss due to the best. Asian uh, corn order. And there were four levels determined by the farmers. 10%, 15%, 20%, 40%, 70% yield loss. Second attribute is that it is big BT maze or it is non-BT. So BT maze and non-BT maze whether or not the maize seed used is BT variety or non BT variety. The third attribute is farmer informal because uh, you know, uh, uh, farmer sec uh, uh, secure information means information in uh, using these new varieties. Uh, so the yield attribute levels is still binary, just like uh, the BT maize is binary attribute. You have the, the information is coming from the farmer or the information is coming from the input supplier. Another binary attribute is that it is paid in cash or you have a choice, cash or credit. So it's the binary, cash or, cash or credit versus cash money. And the monetary attribute, which is the price, and it has uh, several levels. 600, 1,500, 2,007, 4,900. And this has been determined in the farmer school discussion. Okay. This is the price of 18 kilogram of the new seating, seating pesos. Now, given these uh, seed attributes and uh, levels of attribute, the profiles that we can generate is about 436 profiles. So if you are going to use all of these profiles using a, a full factorial combination, then we will have about thousands of choice sets that we have to ask the farmer. And you know, the farmer cannot answer all of these thousands of choice sets. After maybe 20, he will stop and say he's already tired answering, <laughs> making choices. So what we did was to do fractional uh, uh, factorial design, uh, doing some orthogonalization. And then with this orthogonalization, oops, This resulted only to 32 pairwise comparison of maize profile. So, given this fractional uh, factorial approach design, we are left only with 32 choice sets that we can present to the partner. So, first choice set, let him choose. Okay, second choice set, let him choose, check it. But this is still too many for the partner. For the 32, it will take you probably including explanation maybe two to three hours. Okay. So what we did was to random block, randomly block the 32, okay, and that leaves us only eight choice sets okay, to present to the farmer. And a copy, the farmers were presented with eight choice sets, each containing uh, two massive profiles and an opt-out. Okay. We need an opt-out. Uh, as shown in figure, in the next figure, this is an example of a choice set. So we present several eight of these uh, eight different choice sets to the farmer that provides different combination of your attributes. Okay. 
if in this choice set you have the seed price to be 2007, the loss due to space is 70, we have, oh, we have uh, four levels of that. Look, that level is 40, here is 40, 70. Seed type is BT corn, that one is also BT corn for option B. Seed payment here is uh, cash only, this one is credit, and information coming from the farmer for this uh, option, it is coming from the input supplier. So, so this is the farmer, let him choose whether option A, option B, if there is, he cannot choose between the two, then option C, neither of the two options. Okay. Now for the survey, we uh, did a three-stage sampling framework uh, that includes two provinces, 17 barangays. The two provinces are Sabela and South of Bato. And uh, uh, from these 17 barangays, we were able to randomly choose 466 maize farm households. This is uh, Isabella, and that one is South of Guadalajara. Uh, considering the distance, then probably you will see the samples to be, the characteristics of the samples to be different between the two areas. Now we use three survey instruments, the knowledge and uh, uh, attitudes. Uh, and then the choice experiment itself and some uh, socioeconomic characteristic, characteristics we elicited from uh, the farmers. So for the resulting discussion, let us first characterize farmers and farms. So, You have given a, a, a farm characteristic by site and by my main seed used. So between Isabella and South of Tobacco, regardless of the type of main seed used, you will know that uh, Isabella farmers are younger. They are also more experienced. They have uh, less educated, uh, less income, compared to the South of the Bottom farmers, uh, but with higher of farm income and uh, uh, higher uh, capital assets. Okay. They have attended best, best training management, best management training, and uh, member of uh, uh, many, uh, many are uh, members of less are members of farmers organization but if we uh, disaggregate by type of variety BT maize and non-BT maize in Isabella you know that BT maize farmers are a little bit older in Isabella also in South Cotabato and experience in farm they are more experienced in Isabella but less experienced in South Cotabato this one is and uh, li livestock income is uh, uh, higher in both areas, also with more farm income and uh, capital assets. Best management training, they have attended more than uh, non bt maize farmers, and they are a uh, uh, member of uh, more farmers' organization than uh, the uh, non bt For the farm characteristics, uh, you will note that uh, farms in uh, Isabela are smaller than in South of Tabaco. Uh, maize area is also smaller. And uh, distance from seed source, it's uh, more distant. Uh, the, input, uh, the seed suppliers are more distant from the farm than in South of Tabaco. Seed price, it's more expensive. In Isabella, uh, yield is also higher in Isabella than in South of Tabaco. Uh, maize, the price is also higher on a per kilogram basis, uh, but sale per, uh, uh, per, per hectare basis 
is lesser in Isabela than in South Cotabato. Many avail credit, but less are using pesticides in uh, Isabela. If we compare by uh, type of variety, then BT maize farmers' farms are uh, larger. Also, for the maize, uh, for the area devoted to maize, and distance from seed source is still uh, uh, distant for uh, uh, Sabela farmers than for BT maize farmers than for non BT maize farmers. Price of uh, maize is the same, almost the same area for BT and not BT, but the volume sold of BT maize uh, is higher than uh, the non-BT maize farmers. Those who avail credit, almost uh, higher for uh, BT maize, but lower pesticide use for BT maize than for non-BT maize. And uh, you will see also the comparison between, between BT maize and non-BT maize farmers in some that's two columns. For the basic supply, in 2007, about 25,000 metric tons has been sold as seeds in the country. And these are supplied by uh, public and private uh, institutions. So the private institutions are the Monsanto, Syngenta, the Pioneer, and the, for the public, DPI. Uh, selling practically uh, the open pollinated varieties. And we have several types of uh, uh, seeds. You have the land races, we, we call it the traditional varieties, the open pollinated and the hybrid varieties. Hybrid varieties under, wheat is under the hybrid variety. With a trait, which is wheat. Uh, Now let's look at the results of the conditional logic model and uh, compare that with the random parameter logic models. The com uh, uh, conditional logic model was estimated using 3,738 choices. We have 466 respondents multiplied by eight choice sets that gives us a sample of 3,738. And the results is given in this table. So now you will see that almost all, all attributes are significant determinant of the price of, of the uh, preference for a BTC. Okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, almost all of the attributes are significant uh, in determining the attribute or uh, determining the type of maize seed to buy. And uh, consistent economic theory, we see that seed price is negative and significant. Meaning, farmers would prefer seeds that are less costly. Okay. And among, and also here, you have a negative uh, coefficient for yield loss, meaning farmers would prefer a seed that will give a seed variety that gives them lower yield losses. Okay. And for the binary attributes, the more significant binary attribute is the cost of credit. So as a value of 0.13, 3. Okay. And uh, farmers, therefore, in uh, all areas, would prefer cost of credit, not cost of credit. It's cost of credit terms. But for uh, information, they would prefer getting the information from the supplier, input supplier, because that is negative. And this is, they would prefer also to grow non bd as shown by the negative, or the conditional logic model. Now, uh, for the model fit, you'd note that we have a uh, row squared of 0.46. The row squared is very much similar to R squared in our regression analysis. 
uh, only that the significance uh, falls in lower values. Uh, Henshire uh, tells us that uh, uh, rho squared between 0.2 to 0.4 is already a good fit, and this one is a 0.4. Okay. The only problem in running the CLM model was that it rejected IIA property. Okay. Therefore, we will have biased results. So, using the uh, using the test, the uh, Hussman and McFadden test, we it rejected the IIA property. So, we have to look for another model. Okay, so we use the random parameter logic model since it does not require IIA and addresses heterogeneity, although. The RPLM model does not give us where the source of the whole heterogeneity comes from, but simply tells us there is heterogeneity. Okay? So here, you will know that the signs are quite similar for the coefficients compared to CLM, but in the coefficient of the standard deviation, you will know that there is really heterogeneity in terms of mute loss and BTMAs because the coefficient of standard deviation here and here, they are significant. Okay. So, meaning there is heterogeneity uh, among samples on these attributes. The explanation of the coefficients of the RPLM model uh, follows that of the uh, CLM here. Uh, well, value uh, in standard theory again, it's negative and significant meaning farmers would prefer uh, seed variety that cost less. Okay? But among the binary variables, you will note that cost of credit is preferred than BTMAs. So, meaning farmers were more concerned on the characteristic that the seed will be sold in cash or credit than the, it is resistant to insects. Okay? So this is more preferred over that. And uh, uh, farmers would prefer information also coming from the input supply. So since uh, we have shown uh, there is heterogeneity in these two aspects. Then we try to to detect the source of heterogeneity by stratifying farmers into various clusters, and again estimate the indirect utility function. So we did some run, separate run for Isabella, and we did a separate run for uh, Sao and the results are shown. For the separate runs, without disaggregating it by type of variety, you will know that, uh, again, uh, farm farmers would uh, prefer a uh, variety that uh, uh, decreases uh, yield loss. Uh, in Isabella, they would prefer uh, BT maize, but in South Cotabato, no, they would prefer the non bt because majority of the farmers here were still using the hybrid varieties. Uh, it could be an indication of the best pressure of the uh, Asia Corridor. The For uh, information, uh, both areas would want it to come from the input supplier. And here, you know, it's not significant uh, in Isabella, the, the cost of credit terms or customs because majority of the farmers were already securing seeds through credit. Okay? So it came out, it came out to be insignificant. But here it is significant in South Tobacco, they would prefer uh, seeds to be in cast or credit, their choice. And for seed price again, uh, consistent to the theory, it's negative. Okay? And we have our row square, 0.3 here for Isabella and for South Cotabato, 0.5. 0. 
and we still disaggregated when we uh, when we disaggregated side the tobacco according to BT corn farmers and uh, non BT farmers the model did not the difference there was actually no difference we did some tests uh, we call it the Lavoie Lavoie swipe test likelihood ratio test and the difference the different uh, the results uh, gave us that the difference was not significant for South of the Bible. But for Isabella, it was significant. Uh, the model was uh, significant. So what I presented here was only for Isabella, where you have a significant difference between the two models when we disaggregated by BT farm and non-BT farmers. So here, again, you will note that uh, for yield loss, they would prefer one that decreases yield loss. And, uh, but for BT maize, here, BT, BT farmers would prefer BT, non-BT farmers would prefer non -BT. For information, they would both would prefer it from uh, the uh, input supplier. But for cash or credit, again, BT farmers would prefer cash or credit, while non-BT farmers would prefer cash. So this is where the differences lie. And seed price again was uh, you know, a negative, and we have the row uh, squared again. So, uh, given these results, then we can already compute for the implicit prices of Macy attributes. Uh, the uh, choice experiment method is consistent with utility maximization and demand theory, and we can compute for the implicit prices derived in the form of willingness to pay. And this is shown in this table. Okay. So for non-BT farmers in Isabella, only uh, yield loss uh, came out to be significant. Uh, meaning uh, uh, they would pay, non-BT farmers would pay 211 pesos in order to, to reduce their yield loss by 1%. Okay. But for BT farmers, uh, all the characteristics, uh, attributes came out to be significant. Here, they will pay more to reduce yield loss. They are willing to pay 266 to reduce yield loss by 1%. And they are willing to pay 2,303 pesos if it is a BT, a variety. And if it is coming from, uh, if the information is uh, coming from uh, seed, from the input supplier rather, they are willing to pay 1,800, and if it is uh, cash or credit, they will pay 1,480. And uh, from here, you would note that they value more, uh, that put more value on the PT because it's 2,303. And if you add all of this, it will come out to be around 5,530 uh, something, which is actually the price, more or less. Of the BTC in the area during the time. Uh, likewise, in South Cotabato, you have uh, they will are willing to pay lesser for yield loss. Okay, so this is already an indication that the best pressure was lower uh, in the area. So they are willing to pay lower, 185 for a yield reduction of one percent, and BT maize. They are also willing to pay lower because many are using still the hybrid varieties. And uh, they are also willing to pay 764 pesos if the information is coming from the input supplier and 1,233 if it is cash or credit. If you add all of this, then that is the estimate of the price of the BT uh, uh, C in. Uh, South of the bar. So, major conclusions of, of the study, most important attribute of may see is that whether it is BT or non-BT, but its price, option to purchase with credit, and reliable information coming from the supplies. Okay. Second, all farmers prefer May seeds less susceptible to the Asian corn border, 
but not all would prefer the meat. Okay. There is considerable heterogeneity among sample farmers. In Isabella, farmers value BTC the most while payment scheme for farmers in South Carolina. So the policy implications are one, due to heterogeneity, it is important to put in place marketing and extension strategies tailored to the diversity of farm populations and sites. So the understanding of the characteristic would help tailor the strategy, marketing strategy that, uh, or extension strategy that you would employ in a particular area. Well, to increase probably adoption, it's one, or sales of uh, seeds. Second, the extension of credit for seed acquisition is an important instrument to support the diffusion of new maize varieties based on the results from these two areas. Third, the input suppliers play a key role in providing some information to support the use of improved seeds. And fourth, on the method, the choice experiment can be effectively employed in the Philippines. With farmers' group discussions and face-to-face -face interview respondents, with due consideration of the diversity in socioeconomic factors across sites. And lastly, in the logic regressions, you know one attribute there, which is ASC, the Alternative Specific Constants. We have determined the attributes, four attributes. All other attributes is your alternative specific constants. We're found to be positive and significant, indicating a status quo bias. Okay? This implies that farmers are more likely to choose one of the seed alternatives, okay? meaning BT or non-BT, than status quo. Okay? Than status quo. Thank you Thank you, Dr. Yorobe. The floor is now open for our audience. If you like your questions or your comments to Dr. Yorobe, for the benefit of the audience, could you please introduce yourself as well as, well as your organization? Any questions, comments from the group? While we're waiting for you to digest the information and to form your questions, I would also like to invite you to next week's ABSS seminar. The seminar is on the Philippine National Red Plus Strategy to be presented by uh, Forrester Lourdes Wagan from the Forest Management Bureau. So that will be next week on uh, January 25, 4 to 5 p.m. also. Any questions for Dr. Yorobe? Yes, I can see you thinking if you're going to put your hand up. Please use the microphone here. Thank you. Hello. Yes, yeah. sir. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Miguel uh, from the College of Development Communication. And I understand that according to your study, uh, in South Cotabato, they prefer not BT. Yeah. Uh, do you think this has cultural implications? Uh, culture, I do not know. But I think economic implications, yes. Economic implications? Yes, because uh, uh, during the time, uh, one, the cost of the hybrid is very much uh, half of that of the BT. That's one indication. Okay. Second, uh, as I was telling you, the pressure could probably be lower, the uh, best pressure in South Cotabato, Cotabato during the time could have been lower. And uh, to tell you, uh, before these farmers adopted the BT, they were all using the hybrid variety. Okay. So some were not uh, probably convinced enough to shift in terms of the economic benefits, they are not yet convinced enough to shift from the hybrid to the BT. But for culture, uh, I, it was not part of our study, so I, I really do not know. Uh, probably in our incoming study, we have invite, invited uh, 
Dr. Cavadilla to uh, to look at uh, the anthropology part, then probably we can look at the, the effect of culture. Thank you very much for that show. Okay. Yes, sir. My name is Dr. Sansudeva. Uh, Dr. Sansudeva. Okay. I'm a animal scientist. I'm a minor in my life. And I'm from uh, Indonesia, from Faculty of uh, University of Tiponegoro, Samarang, Indonesia. Uh, my question, my first question when I saw when I saw your presentation, I'm really interested about the uh, result of the education to the BT mice and non BT mice. Because as I know that in your table, uh, the BT mice in Isabella especially, the one who like in BT mice is the lower education than the non BT mice. Ah, here. Education. Yes. Ah, yes. In, yes, sir. In uh, education. So they are. They are uh, Isabella, BT yeah, mice. less educated. Yes, sir. The uh, Isabella, BT mice, I don't know. It's a matter. Okay. Uh, but uh, you will know that more are adapting in Isabella. Uh, no, no, sir. In Isabella. Between Isabella. Uh, between BT and mice. Between uh, BT and non BT. Education, sir. Education. Education. Uh, okay. This one. Uh, 6.9 and 7.9. Uh, yeah, 90.1. Zero. Zero. Ah, here one. Okay, okay. Yes, sir. So it's 6.9 uh, versus 7.1. Uh, yes. Any comment about it, sir? Um, and the second. It's almost the same, actually. In fact, it's not significant. The difference is not significant. So, you know, uh, whether they are uh, highly educated or less educated, uh, they adopt uh, probably BT or uh, hybrid varieties uh, based on the results. Well, these are just. Uh, it's very close, 6.9 and 7.1 years. Okay. And why? And that can be uh, augmented by your results from uh, management trainings. Okay. The Here. second, sir. Look, uh, they are uh, they attended more trainings. Mm -hmm. Prob that's probably the reason why more adopted BT. But for education, I I cannot uh, you know make a deduction. Education as a impact production. Yes. Okay. Uh, the second, just this morning, uh, I studied about the CPM and the what? CPM, contingent value method okay. in the life. Uh -huh. And in there, uh, I, I just get information that uh, actually, if we count a willingness to pay, it's really high, highly biased information because sometimes they they give it uh, easier to see the willingness to accept than willingness to pay. Oh, okay. what, what is your comment, sir? Thank well, you. Well, uh, it, you can approach it either way, uh, looking at willingness to accept. But uh, for our purpose, we are look, trying to look at uh, implicit price of the commodity. That's why I use willingness to pay. Because if it's willingness to accept, then uh, the willingness to pay is more uh, more reasonable for uh, this purpose within this debate. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you for that question. Any more questions? Comments from the group? Okay, with that, can you please give Dr. Yorobe another round of applause?